Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Bill from Punish Props and Tested. And we are here today with a tutorial and a little bit of experimentation uh, with paint washes. So uh, I had this idea because I was working on a project we worked on last time, painting my uh, Eddie robot figure. And most of the times when I do washes, stuff I've done with Frank and even with you, I use acrylic washes. And this is the first time I then use an oil paint, right. an oil wash, and I found it to be a completely different experience. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to pick your brain as to how you think of those two types of paints for washes, and let's see if we can demo of what they look like. Right. So we've got some paints here. These are acrylics. These are oils. You can get them at any art supply store. Mm -hmm. um, the the main difference, the biggest difference between the two is that acrylics will dry mostly in about a day. Right? Okay. Oils could take a week to months to dry. Like if you put a lot of like Bob Ross's paintings or oil paintings, those things took months to dry completely. Now we're only going to use a little bit, so it wouldn't take that long. But if you're like painting a prop or something and it needs to be done tomorrow, uh, don't count on this being dry in time. So that's the long term effect of it. In the short term, are there also differences for yeah. how you would use them to do like a paint wash? Right. So the acrylic paints, uh, normally you'd water it down a little bit, right? Try and get it in all the crevices. Uh, and then, and then uh, use paper towels to clean most of it off. Um, the process is fairly similar for the oil, but it, it kind of acts differently on the surface. Mm. Um, because of the oil in there, it's very greasy. Yeah. Which is kind of cool if you're making a space gun or something that you want to look greasy and dirty. It's got that kind of shine to it. But since you also have a lot more working time, you can play with it a bit. You can get kind of more gradual gradients. Mm -hmm. um, I like using oil paints if I have the time, especially on things that need to look mechanical. Mm -hmm. The greasy look, the smear is a little yeah. different. It lets the paint maybe sit in a crevice differently, yeah. more organically mm -hmm. even. The, uh, the acrylic paint, so I usually end up using because I run out of time. I'm like, mm. oh, this needs to be dried tomorrow. Mm. Uh, I'll just... Uh, mix up some brown and some black with some water, brush it on, dry it off, it's dry the next day. No muss, no fuss. All right, well, to illustrate that, we have some small little figurines. It's picked up at the local toy store, and they're the exact same figurines. These aren't uh, primed, they already have a coat of paint on them, but they're very, they're even colored. Mm -hmm. um, and this has enough sculptural detail that hopefully the wash will do something. Yeah. To it. So let's pop these open and take a look. This is the T-1000 with hole in head. Just picked it up at the local Super 7 store. There you go. Little figurines. Okay, so uh, what do you want to start with first? Let's do the acrylic. I think that's the one most people would be most familiar with. And we just have a burnt umber and a black. Mm -hmm. And we can just use this table here. A little bit of black paint. A little bit goes a long way with yeah. both of these. We're going to be wiping most of it off anyway. A little bit of brown. And then we got a cup of water there. Note that oil paint won't mix with water. Yeah. Unless you get water mixable oil paints, which is a thing. I didn't know that. Um, but this stuff, because it's oil, won't mix with your water. So uh, we have some brushes here. This might be too big, yeah. unless you're really going for the economy. Um, chip brushes are awesome for props and stuff, but these guys are so tiny, we're going to use just kind of normal looking paint brushes so we can get everything down into the details. Um, you can thin or thicken the paint as much as you want. Um, they do make things to make the paint thicker, uh, acrylic mediums. Uh, but I'm just going to thin it a bit, grab a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, kind of make a little bit of a mess, and then cover our T1000. So, super, super simple. Just brushing it on his body. And it's just a really, really thin wash. And then take a paper towel, if you could grab a paper towel for me, Norm. And we just wipe most of it off, or, or dab most of it off, like so. Now, this surface, like you said, was not Prime. primed. This has uh, a painted surface, mm -hmm. and it looks like the water's beating up a little bit on it. Mm -hmm. So I might go with just a little bit of a thicker mixer to get a little bit more of the acrylic paint to stick, right? So that's a lot less watery, yeah. and it's gonna kinda grab on the surface a little bit better. 
And it also depends on what your the purpose of your wash is. Yeah. Is your wash for aging? Uh, is it for seam lines? Um, mm -hmm. Is it just to bring out details for just just, just flesh out the details and the contrast? Uh, here it looks like you're, you're going for aging. Yeah, like like this is a statue or something that is getting kind of dark. And I'm mixing up the browns and the blacks a little bit, using a little bit less uh, less water on there. Um, a lot of times when you're working with the acrylics. You can work in passes. So you do one pass like this and kind of dab everything off and see a lot more of the, the paint actually stuck down that time because there was less water there. But uh, you could do a pass like this and see how you feel. And that was a comfortable amount of time. Like there was, you did it for maybe like 30 seconds uh, between your yeah. dropping that first brush on, between wiping it off. <laughs> Uh, and the longer you wait, the more that's going to set, mm -hmm. and the harder it's going to be to wipe off. And so you do just change the base color a little bit. Right. Yeah. So that's just adding a little bit of aging on there. Uh, why don't you give it a go, Norm? Yeah, absolutely. There you go. I also noticed you you do a dab method. Yeah, I'm just trying to to push the bristles into any details, um, especially with something shiny like that. It'd be really easy to just sort of scribble over it and miss spots and not. It's hard to see that shiny surface. It's hard to see areas that um, should be dirty but are just dark from the shadows of the, on the model. So I, I make sure I push the uh, the paint down into all the details. And same with uh, for removing the paint too. You just dab. Yeah. You don't wipe. And and, and again, that all depends on the the look you're going for. Um, I don't. It would be really easy to also cover it in paint and then go. And uh, I'll use this and then wipe it and take all of it back off, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with a smaller model like this, uh, you can be a little more delicate. And uh, of course, we have our a couple of different colors. If you had more colors, you wanted to vary it up a little bit, you could do one pass with black, one pass with some brown or some burnt sienna to make it look rusty. Um, you could do one pass that's kind of a heavier, um, less watered down paint. And you could do another pass with a more watered down paint with a different color. There's so many different varieties you could do to uh, get a particular look that you're trying to achieve. It's all about um, hitting that target and actually trying to make it look like something and not just I covered it in paint and wiped it off. So as I finish this up on acrylic, uh, why don't you start with the oils sure. on that second figure. So you keep at that. These are just, again, more normal oil paints. Oh, there's our oil paints. Looks like they've, the pigment and the oil have separated a tiny bit in the tube. Um, I have found with oil paints, depending on the brand and depending on the, the, the base paint that you used, that this will sometimes lift the layer below it. Oh, so okay. different types of paints don't always play well together. If you're only using acrylics, your base coat is acrylic, and your weathering paints are acrylic, so long as that base coat is pretty much dry, you should be okay. But the specific example, I used all clad lacquers on a model, and I didn't seal it. And the oil paints lifted that lacquer oh. right off. It went right back down to the black coat underneath it. Now I sealed it with uh, aqua gloss. And that sealed it perfectly. Then I weathered it with the oil paints, no problem. But if you're working on a model, you have your space gun or whatever it is you've made, uh, and you have, uh, let's say you're, you're spraying a chrome paint on there, spray some of that on a separate piece as a test. Test piece, yeah. So that before you put some unknown paint on it, you can see if it's gonna mess up the, the paint job. All right, so I have my, uh, brown and black oil paints here and just kind of mixing them up a bit and they are very greasy very sort of they have that nice smear to them this one's separated a little bit but um now with these you have all the time in the world you're doing the same kind of dab same thing that the technique is very similar but what's great is how you have all this time to work with it. You don't have to rush to yeah. get off before that acrylic sets. And it's very sticky, so it covers really well. 
with the acrylic paints, especially if you water it down, it may not cover very well. But this stuff is so sticky. It's like engine grease. That is so much coverage yeah. right now over just that headpiece. Where we wouldn't even paint. we would never want to do that with the acrylic or even leave let it on there for that long. Cause then it would just change the whole undertone. Right. The um I could paint this whole figure like like this with oil paint. Whoa. And it won't be it dry it'll take days to dry. So I, I got plenty of time. Um, if I did that with the acrylic paint, it, it would eventually start to dry, especially if it's a thin layer, and then you'd have to scrape it off. Um, this has blown my mind. I had never I I treated the application the same way, where I would you know go through my routine of like a few spots, see how much I can get away with, and then start wiping off. But you're really going at it and leaving it there. Oh yeah. So I could do like his top half, and then go back and do his bottom half, like so. The other thing I like about the oil paint is that it's, because you have so much time, it's just easy mode. It's literally like you have a space gun that got dirty with grease and then you just wipe it off. You just clean it a little bit. Now, like I said before, if I have the time to let it dry, I prefer using oil paints on things that are meant to look mechanical. So. That is why I love this stuff. All right, so look, his whole upper body <laughs> is completely covered, right? Oh no, so dirty. And I've got all the time in the world oh my God. to just wipe it off. Now you are doing more of a wipe here than a dab. Yeah, and, and what's great is, it's kind of hard to show on this tiny model, but if I wanted to, I could clean it up and then go into specific areas and like draw down, let's say I wanted to make like a, like a stain this is not the right brush for it, but like you can make it look like uh, it's not a, not a great example, but you can make it look like it's um, let's say it's been leaking mm -hmm. something in a certain yeah, area, yeah, a drip stain. So yeah, we'll just take all the time in the world to clean that off, and you can go very lightly and just take a little bit off each time and leave a bunch. Behind. What I have found is that with oils, when you're wiping it off, because it does smear, it's directional. Mm -hmm. And so I have to pay attention to the direction of the smear to be consistent right. with how I think the grime and the dirt and the grease would have been wiped off yeah. on a mechanical figure. Yep. So just be consistent. Don't go left and right, left and right. Oh my gosh, that looks so cool. Give me your arm. There wow. you go. So let's take a look at him, the oil versus the acrylic. Oh, you can tell with the acrylic, yeah, it's getting into, you know, some of those nooks and, and crevices, mm -hmm. like right under the collar there. But you can also tell it's changing that base color, not yeah. as evenly because some that's setting. And the uh, and the oil paint really sticks around. Mm -hmm. It really, really does. Right, right. Like so. Here you go. You can do his legs. We'll move his arms out of the way. There you go. In terms of uh, Bill, in terms of wiping off your washes, paper towels. Your favorite way to do it? Or you use a cloth? You sometimes even use a brush or what's um, uh, paper towels you usually find. Um, terry cloth towels are pretty great for it, especially if you're doing big stuff. Um, but if you have paper towels, it's, it gets the, the job done. Okay, Bill. So we've done these two 1000 figures. Uh, I brought a final project to do. Awesome. And these are from the same company, but they're spacesuits. Spacesuits. Alien spacesuits. In the first Alien film, and there are three of them. These look too clean. Too clean. Walk by them in the store and like, no, they should be really dirty and grimy. So I'm gonna pop these out of the box. Can Each I take one? Can I have the blue one? You want the blue one? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm gonna use oil paints on this because they look so good. This is gonna be great for adding a wash, just because you see all that sculptural detail yeah, here, lots of texture. and even the the suit pattern mm -hmm. right there, just like 
all that is gonna absorb so much grease and grime. So you wanna take on uh, oil paint? Yes, I do. Oil wash, I uh, will do acrylic, and we'll see how it looks afterward. I'm gonna start on the helmet. And I also grabbed these little Q-tip things for removing paint on detailed areas. Mm. Cause um, like this, this uh, let's say this visor part here, which I don't know why there's a visor there cause you can't, your head can't turn that way, but that's fine. Like I can get most of that off, but I might want to go in and clean it even more in the crevices, just a little bit more. Cause it's at scale, that would be a really thick, like if I was this tiny, that would be a giant thick bit of, of uh, grime. I don't want to overdo it. I forgot, is this, you have the- uh... This is oil. Okay, I got it. Okay. I'm gonna start on the helmet. Less than 10 minutes of painting. Uh, it's having fun. We can go on for so much longer. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the process applies to bigger things. Mm hmm. And that's so good. Yeah, the oils came out really great on this little guy. Um, a lot of this texture detail isn't obvious until you add that wash. So if you look at Mr. Pink here, Mm -hmm. There's all this cloth texture on the arm that's invisible until you put that on there. And the oil paints does a great job of clinging to those, those crevices. Yep. Um, this will take a few days to dry. I could manipulate this tomorrow if I wanted to. How, how much manipulation? Like, could you do like, I as could much of a wipe almost, off? Almost clean it all the way off tomorrow wow. if I wanted to. Okay. It takes that long to dry. Yeah. Uh, which is awesome. Um, normally I wouldn't do that, but if I'm working on this and uh, I paint another piece of something and I want to match them. I have a little time to sort of fudge it a little bit. And then with acrylics, you know, did a lot of the same stuff in terms of bringing out the, the recessed details, sculptural details, but you can see uh, with something this small, it dries, it can dry unevenly. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So you get a little bit of splotchiness, uh, which if you're looking for dirt and grime, that could be a look yeah, you're going yeah. for. Um, but with this, especially like, the high spots you can really just Skip wipe completely. off and because it's not dry yet, that'll come right off. Yeah. 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 The, the acrylics, not so much. Yeah, you can add water. You could also just mm -hmm. uh, wet paper towel, rub that off. Um, super fun, super cool. I think I'm gonna definitely try more oil washes yeah. now in the future. Thank you so much, Bill, for you got sharing it, some tips with us. Thank you guys out there for watching and we'll be back next time with another project. We'll see you then. Thank <laughs> you.